Good morning, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Just trying something new. <laughs> That's <No>. fair. <laughs> Welcome to episode 98 of the Sensible Sociopath Podcast. Woo-hoo! If you're listening to us, obviously we're live yeah, yeah. right now, even if you downloaded us on your MP3 player. <laughs> <laughs> Those exist still? Yeah, totally. Wow. People are using their Zunes right now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that brick. Yeah. <laughs> brick awesome. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, like I said, we're live on a Friday night. Uh, we are joined by our producer, uh, Roma. My long friend, time friend. Hi, She's guys. a friend. She's been my friend. She has been. <laughs> been a great friend. And uh, we also have super fan Dan uh, back. Hi, Dan. Hi. He is on our uh, second mic. So, uh, today we wanted to talk about a few things. Now, some of them are a little controversial. First off, are you aware that Stalin had trials that were not, uh, that were something, that, what they called them was was show trials? I, I believe I remembered learning that something like that existed. Yeah, it wasn't a great time in history because basically he would just take his enemies and put them on trial and then, and then just execute them. <laughs> so they already knew what the outcome of the trial was going to be when they had the trial. And we're just really glad that this sort of thing would never happen in America, you know, that that uh, or that someone would never be sacrificed for, you know, let's say because of the whim of the mob or whatever, you know? Yeah, that that would never happen here. Yeah. You know, and since we cover a lot of communist stuff here, um, that's just something I wanted to uh, go over. I also wanted to. Um, well, I forgot our, our catchphrase, Roma. Oh, Um Welcome to the Sensible Sociopath Podcast, where the truth is sp- spoken and the rules are broken. Ooh, one of these times you're going to get it. <laughs> I think that's the fourth or fifth time I've tried it, and I've never gotten it once. Fourth. Fourth? Yeah. Super fan Dan would know. <laughs> take his word for it. <laughs> um, you can chat with us live. Uh, we do have... Um, uh, 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 oh, do us a favor. Smash the like button. Uh, shoot that shero to your loved ones. And then uh, sub as hard as you can. That's always fair. Mm -hmm. And we're up over 200 subs. That's pretty badass. There you go. (laughs) We're we're happy about that because, uh, you know, it's a lot of organic growth. Do you you need a dungeon for that many? For that many subs? Oh, yeah. I'd imagine it'd have to be a pretty big dungeon. You know how strong you'd be from choking that many people? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it depends on, you know, whether or not you use the device because now they have devices. Mm. See, I would use something like a tourniquet. You know those tourniquets, and then they have the little thing that you twist? Yeah. yeah. yeah Old school. Yep. Nice. Either that or like a, I don't know, piece of coarse rope. <laughs> 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 they probably are into that sort of thing. I don't know what grit, but mm-hmm. coarse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the, um, that's a good Archer reference. I like that. <laughs> That's probably, I wonder if that's kind of the way it is with the BDSM uh, community, that, that the coarser the rope, the more you love someone. Is that the case? I have no I, idea. I'd have yeah. to say it probably depends upon the fetishist. Okay. As to uh, whether or not that's true. They appreciate a good rope. Yeah, well, good. They, they should. Yeah. I mean, being tied up regularly, I believe, is a thing mm-hmm. that most of them are into. Yeah. Usually I'm tied up thinking about sandwiches. <laughs> I've noticed. I've noticed. Yeah. We had like th- three. And I'm not kidding. Like three episodes where you talked about sandwiches mm-hmm. quite vigorously. And it was a good thing. Well, I think I really need to bring um, the world into a greater appreciation for the sandwich. Because I feel like it doesn't get enough respect. You know? You could be the new Earl of I, I, Sandwich. That's true. I feel like Jared Fogel really screwed that up <laughs> oh, you know, he, with all the trouble he got in. Lost all that weight and just looked at the wrong kind of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know where you were going with that? I like it. <laughs> I approve. <clears throat> I know Kat's a big fan of uh, sandwiches. Is she? Oh, yeah. Well, Kat. She had mentioned it once or twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one that's underappreciated is the egg salad sandwich. 
I'd agree with that. Mm -hmm. I'm probably more of a plain kind of sandwich guy, but... uh, When I I say plain sandwich, what do you mean? Usually it's just bread, mayo, cheese, possibly. For an egg salad, I just like the egg salad straight up. Wow. I could see, yeah. Is this going to turn into another... uh, well, sandwich episode? Yes. A sandwich tangent? <laughs> <laughs> it's been going on for weeks. Yeah. I think Roma, that's a t-shirt. Make soon. a t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> sandwich tangent. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> Warning yeah. sandwich tangent ahead. Makes frequent sandwich tangents. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dan, you should break out some of that sensible sociopath uh, whiskey. Well, oh, you yes. know, you're right. Sandwich tangent is this week's word and last <laughs> week's was boner parade so now it's uh we have two words we're going yeah it's uh, oh, i love it yeah sandwich tangent so i think that really should be a t-shirt i think so I would, too i mean at least i'll buy i'll buy a, a damn sandwich tangent t-shirt By i'll the work way, on it you can get the uh, sensible sociopath podcast merch uh, at the sensible sociopath podcast.com and uh, yes, we've got it up on the screen there. So ready when you are. Okay, give me a second here. It's just the full, the full show name. We wanted a nice short <laughs> URL. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But it's like, yeah, you can't, you can't mess it up. Oh, um, also, I got this uh, drink to punish everyone, uh, which is Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Major Melon. It's not great. <laughs> okay. It is not great. Um, Dan, have you tried it? Um, I did. My wife and I drank some in the car the other day because she was oh. curious. I was going to say, you lied because there's no there's no drink in your gutter. I'm a gutter I, I, checker. Well, you know, I clean it out every time. Oh, do you? Yeah. All right. One of those people that likes to uh, appear to be a liar. Uh, Dan, Sarah says, don't forget my replacement magnets. Yes, I will not. I will not forget replacement magnets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's gonna forget. He's totally gonna forget. He's, he's already forgotten. <laughs> it's like a goldfish. Forgotten what? <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about, guys? Okay. Bologna, lettuce, and mayo. Do you know that I love a good bologna sandwich? I think we know. Okay. Let's just start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Probably get the shirt. Very blessed best place to start. <clears throat> From the beginning. And the cheaper the bologna, the better it tastes. I swear to God. I don't know. <laughs> That's not wrong. It doesn't make me feel good inside, but it's a true thing. You know? <laughs> it's one of those those truths that you can't deny. Yeah. It's an yeah. undeniable truth. That's probably a better way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little bit better. Another shirt. <laughs> undeniable truth. Are you Christian now? What's going on? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Baloney truth. <laughs> um, yes. So this whole—I don't know if you've heard. There's some. There's some people have been rabble rousing. Have you heard that? Uh, I've heard a little whispering. Mm-hmm. I think so. I, I think mean, so. only for the past entire year, <laughs> but especially now, people are getting uh, upset with some of the. You know, just I guess the state of affairs of things or how they perceive it and all that. And, and, and that's fine. You know, uh, I, I don't approve, but people are, people do what people do. Right. That's... Well, my mom said no rabble rousing in the house. So. All right. Well, then just as long as it's not in the house. Burned out a building. Yeah. <laughs> it's just exactly. not the house. Well, it's not that building. Yeah. So I've been thinking about it. And so there's this movement about police, right? There's this movement about, Oh, police are bad or, you know, defund them and and all of this stuff that's been going on for a while sure yeah and it's kind of a demonizing effect on them and so i was thinking about how there's got to be this movement towards people not becoming police i would assume yeah i would think so i mean because i wouldn't sign up now absolutely not (laughs) i mean and 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 wouldn't that be terrible to be like to go through your whole life going hey here's my plan i'm gonna go be a cop and I mean, I guess he could just be a firefighter or something, and you know, I just feel sorry for the day for the guys who like, uh, or sorry for the people who uh, who like just joined the force. Yeah, let's and not gender like, anyone. No, all right, no, of course not. <laughs> um, 
for the uh, persons who just joined the force. Like, they could be furries, so maybe not completely just persons. And furries by <sighs> night. Like, isn't it half persons? I guess. I, yeah, I think they're fox kin and 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 sea urchin kin and narwhal kin, <sighs> not the jellyfish kin. Okay. Wom- <laughs> wombat kin. <laughs> Another shirt, Roba. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, their first day must These have been beans. rough. Oh, yes. okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their first day must have been rough when they just joined the force. They're like, they're defunding us. We've got people force who sounds hate like us. rape culture. So let's <laughs> let's just avoid that. How about we say the the community? No, that's the. No. <laughs> that just sounds like uh sounds like they're they're um stealing they're they're uh culturally appropriating. Oh, this is so... getting messy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we just need a list of things we can say. It seems yeah. like it'd be shorter. <laughs> Boater parade for one. <laughs> Boater parade? Yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Roma. T-shirt. <laughs> All right. Well, we are we already uh this boater parade. Everybody was... drink. <laughs> All that right. was last week, I think, or uh, the week before. Fair enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back to the boner parade. <laughs> <laughs> so now talking about the police. Yes. Um, so they're, they, they're, they join up, and it's got to be disheartening. Um, so what do you think happens next? Anybody got any, any, any thoughts about it? I do, but... Um. You want me to tell you mine and see if yeah. you guys have any additional ones? Yeah. So there's – I could see it really going to a couple different ways. Either privatizing police or federalizing police. Okay. Now, the problems there would be like if you federalize police, they would have a jurisdiction that's really large – and, right. and, and and I'm sure they would try to – I'm sure they would probably do it in cities first, and they would just and, – and I'm sure there'd be communities that would not give up their policing, and thankfully the, the state, you know, yeah. says whether or not these things happen. But I think there'd be a lot of cities that would jump on board with it because they don't have anybody to, to be police officers right. because everybody's against them. Okay. The problem with that is then they would be under federal rules, and with the way that the federal government has been going, they're going into all the equity and inclusion stuff. Now in the military they have, um, I think it's a chief inclusion officer or something like that, mm-hmm. so it's basically an extra job of someone who just like looks at equity and inclusion numbers and things, I would think. Okay. Um, which yeah, I don't. That doesn't sound like an appropriate military, you know, no uh, <laughs> tool. <laughs> but uh, you know, but that's the way that's the way things are going. And then what happens if they turn out to be the woke police? Exactly. That's uh. what I would be afraid of. Is that then it would turn into them policing things like language and things like who knows, you know, memes and and whatever it is. That they would have a lot of funding, be under the directive of whoever happens to be in charge. And so I'm sure whether, you know, if it's a conservative that's in charge, they could probably shut it down and then they could just reopen it. Um, So I don't see that as being a good solution. No, no. Now, the privatizing is also not a great solution. It could be. Because... If you privatize, then that's kind of what all the li- libertarians, you know, kind of right. believe is mm-hmm. that, oh, you pay your taxes um, and it goes to the police. So why don't we just pay our own police right. without the taxes? True. You know, I guess if you have some big dude that you're willing to pay to protect you, like a lot of, you know, rich like people the mafia. Get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, I guess I guess you need a. Uh... And that's true, too. I didn't even think of that. So the mafia back in the day would protect your business. I mean, something bad will happen. Yeah. You know? Who was who was Muggsy's partner? Uh, Muggsy Bogues? Was it Spud Webb? No, I'm trying to think that's of That's a the, basketball joke from the, the 90s. The, 
the big guy who was always running around with uh, Muggsy in the cartoons. Hmm. I don't remember what his name was. George. George. Yep. George what we, what and Muggsy. We, yeah, what are we going to do today, today, George? What are we going to do today? Yep. Mm-hmm. So if the so if we end up paying private police um, ourselves, that's that's probably fine because I think people would, you know, I think the communities would get together and it probably just turn out to be just like a regular police force. However, I believe that it would end up something looking more like a dystopian future where corporations would be the ones that were doing the policing. So you mean like Google and YouTube and Twitter Facebook and... and so we need to watch out and make sure that Peter Weller doesn't die. I don't get I know I should get the reference Peter Weller. Well, at least as least at least as long as he doesn't become a cop mm. and die in Detroit. Yes, that is very true. As long as that doesn't happen, I think we'll be OK. Well, uh, I believe his name was Murph Murphy. Yeah. Uh, the show Murphy Brown was loosely based upon RoboCop. <laughs> um, I had a feeling it was a prequel. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically I just see this all kind of going into that future where uh, basically the premise of RoboCop, and Aroma, I think we have it up on uh, on one of the, the, the uh, tabs there. So that the looks premise, like Judge Dredd. Well, yeah. That's the next one. Um, it's the third tab, fourth tab, uh, the IMDb, yeah. Okay, there we are. Yeah, so uh, back in 87, uh, there was this movie called RoboCop, and RoboCop was uh, basically a, a – he was a cop that was killed, and the, and the movie is shockingly violent. I forgot how violent it was, and then in the first, like, uh, two minutes, a dude gets, like, blown apart with – automatic gunfire it was it was amazing a lot of bullets yes so anyways it's a it's it's a lot more violent than i recall and probably (laughs) than you recall or anybody (laughs) recalls uh same thing with terminator 2 though i was watching it with like a four-year-old and i was like this is probably not appropriate (laughs) but let's see what happens next i was like go wait outside four-year-old here's the car car keys (laughs) and some booze i need to go get some smokes yeah yeah, exactly (laughs) go outside here's some drugs Uh, so uh basically in the dystopian future uh a corporation is hired by detroit to police because there's so much crime and so much crap going on and with uh he he he's kind of figuring out what happened to him because he doesn't remember because I think basically it's only like his like brain and face, face and yeah. then like lungs and I think that was it because he has yeah. to talk. That's the only reason they saved his lungs, I guess. Interesting. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like this could be a, a viable option. Um, there's these like drones that are like walking through the streets and they got the the mini guns on them and things. Yeah, it's a little cheesy. doesn't Doesn't quite hold up. I think that was the Ed two hundred nine. Hmm. I think that could be. I don't know. I don't recall. But um, yeah, great movie. They ended up making a remake in twenty fourteen with. Uh, he's one of those actors that's been in a lot of things, and I can never remember what the hell his name is. Yeah, I don't know what his name is, but uh, he was on like an HBO show or something. Something like remember. that. You know, like those actors do. <laughs> yeah, actors do that on HBO. Mm-hmm. It did actually get get nominated for Academy Awards, though, and I was kind of surprised that RoboCop was it's because nominated. Michael Keaton was in it. Was it? Yeah. Was he the evil guy? Yeah, I think he was. All right. I do like Michael Keaton. Yeah. Well, who doesn't? I just Michael watched Keaton. a really terrible movie with him in it the other night. Um, what was it called? Clean and sober. No, white noise. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's so bad. Well, I'm sure all the technology really held up. It's was it's the, just the movie in general, is just terrible. Was was it was it the dial-up modem sound? I was think that so. Part of it? Okay. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember the him just like sitting there. He's like looking at the screen and like Goose. something yeah. says something through the static. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, his 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 uh, dead wife. 
talks through the static. Oh, that'd be so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Like, you're supposed I killed to be you. dead. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> why are you talking to me now? Exactly. Yeah. You, oh, you could talk to me before. <laughs> <laughs> could, could say this to me before I got ready for bed. <laughs> That's how Even relationships death, are. Am I right? You're still <laughs> nagging. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's trash day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fold the sheets? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Get under the sheet. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I walked the dog, I promise. Mm-hmm. How many days have you worn those socks? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't matter. You can't smell anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Does It's not white nose. <laughs> Racist. That sounds like a drug movie. That's probably true. Like, blow, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so the other one that i was thinking of because i was thinking of uh, robocop and then the next one that came up judge dread yeah i i feel that's more of the uh the federal policing that you were talking about that's probably true uh and did you know that this one's a really old british comic they said it's like like the oldest comic but i think they mean like strip huh perhaps um I did know that it was a comic strip, but I didn't know that it was the oldest. That's what that's what they and and I don't know what the hell this, you know, I'm just doing research on IMDb, so who knows what is what. Right. Cuz I'm like, wasn't Superman pretty goddamn old? Like Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or or Mickey Mouse or something. When you said oldest comic strip, I was thinking like 1500s. Yeah, yep. Galileo Galilee. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, they're really looking towards the future. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, he was uh he was pretty excited about uh, <laughs> just three at a time, three three <laughs> s- scenes at a time. Um, so Judge Dredd is, I mean, obviously Stallone's the guy because we're a big fan of Stallone around here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he he stars as Judge Dredd, um, who is. Uh, in the dystopian future, the collapse of, of I think this this fake city, metropolis city or something like that, leads to all of the like criminal justice system breaking down, which is kind of interesting. And so what happens is they make these uh, judges, and Dread is his name, where they are. Um, judge jury and executioner so they in interrupt your crime and then they sentence you and so that's that's when you get shot by judge dread with his incredibly awesome special gun he has a badass gun they do they can set it to stun i believe which they don't do often it's a pretty rough (laughs) neighborhood he's in (laughs) but it's a yeah it's a really really great it's it i i like the movie a lot uh, he rides around on a badass motorcycle. He's got oh, a cool yeah. helmet. Yeah. Uh, he's got a slutty partner, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, standard stuff. Mm-hmm. But he is the toughest of all of the judges. And so that's why he's like, that's why he's got a comic book made after him since the 1500s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Galileo Galilei really called it with the uh, motorcycles and, you know, <laughs> stun guns and such. Oh, yeah. And crack cocaine. <laughs> well, you know, George Washington used to read it growing up. It's true. That's yep. That's why he he got in the military. Wanted to be a judge. <laughs> Wanted to be a judge. Mm-hmm. Someday, I will father this country, and become a judge, What's like that? Dread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, I can't remember his line. Sentencing, or I I don't can't remember what it is, but it's some it's something super cheesy, you know. Uh, it was full of a bunch of one liners. Yeah. I am the law. Yes. You know, just something like that, you know. Lots of lots of, of I just, Stallone-isms. I just remember in that particular scene where he's like, I didn't break the law. I am the law. His yeah. like lips did like this. <laughs> it was like You could whoa. always you could always tell it was him because that was the it was like Robocop, you know. <laughs> it's just you tell a little droopy, droopy Stallone smile. <laughs> But, one, one too many punches, and and this one was remade also fairly yeah. recently, and 
some of the cool stuff was they they went back to 1998 and they did the bullet time thing. Yeah. You know, because that was done a while back, but it was done a lot better because like you saw it like go into like a fat guy's gut. Like you just see the bullet traveling and then it all slows down and then you just see the the round go in and then like just like the ripple of of the impact it's really That's cool rough. yeah cool but rough <laughs> very yeah very rough very cool um and so i do think that this one's probably a little more accurate as to what might be uh, be coming down the coming down the pipe pike because it would be i i think for a little while people will will try to placate and and go along with things and say okay we're gonna take away all the violence as much as possible and then things are going to get really bad and then that's when they're like all right we really need to do something and then that's when the thing that nobody wanted will happen yeah and second amendment will be freaking going nuts because if if you're trying to take away the police and you're trying to take away what guns Who's gonna Who's gonna take away the guns? I guess. Mm, that's yeah, true. is really that's... my question. <laughs> Military, maybe. Well, Christopher Titus brought up a maybe. good point once upon a time, and that was that uh, you know uh, they can't take your guns because you have guns, <laughs> mm-hmm. and first they'd have to convince the military, who is you know everybody's relatives to go into their family's homes Mm -hmm. to try and take their family's guns. Mm -hmm. That's going to take a lot of organization. And our country couldn't build a website for health (laughs) care. Yeah, well, I guess that's a pretty good point. However, if you've got a woke police Mm -hmm. and they're all hired for their wokeness and their same thing with the military unreasonability you know that's that's kind of what i'm concerned about is that uh, well i mean if you have things like um you know inclusion whoever they are you know um people that are in charge of that kind of thing mm -hmm. they're going to make sure that they get people that are going to be on their side and you know you just get a bunch of liberals on the Allies. Payroll, exactly. Yeah. Employees, they're called. But but I think there's a lot of, you know, because even when they do all that equity and inclusion stuff, all the Marxist, you know, dividing everyone by color and trying to, you know, basically trying to subvert every institution that is currently uh, so so useful and so good for us. If they're just going to try to divide it down by, you know, gender and race and, you know, all the sexual orientation and sexual identity and all that, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of people that don't buy into it. And I think that hopefully those people will be able to subvert. It'll be, it'll be almost like the roles have switched to the point where the Marxists were subverting, you know, uh, the status quo, I guess you could call mm-hmm. it. And then to the point where people, I mean, of course not like us, you know, or anybody that watches this show, but no, we're good. Yeah. But you know, like people that don't get what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how I mean, cause we're all about the, uh, haven't subscribed yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're all about the die, the diversity, inclusion and equity. I know I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's yeah. the best. <laughs> I mean, nothing could possibly go wrong from that. No, no, no absolutely. No. Yeah, when somebody's like being like a bigot and stuff, I'm all like, "Come on, man!" Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. So, anyways, check out Judge Dredd and RoboCop. They're worth it. They'll show you what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, what you're preparing for. Can't wait. I can't wait to have my inbuilt thigh gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right now, I have to cram it between my butt cheeks. And then, you know, out to of integrate your... it into my uh, body. Like, out, <laughs> out of your fist will come your information spike. Yes. I believe it's a data spike. 
just because I read Dennis a synopsis. Spice, that's right. Oh, it's... and they said he stuck someone in the neck with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Standard and, cop stuff. Um, I wonder if you can use a data spike as a sexual tool. It's bold, but I'm sure you could. Mm-hmm. You got to get the information. Yeah, I don't, I wonder what it's made out of though, because if it's something that's porous, that's not good. No, no, no. Yeah, might have a French tickler option. Is it, does is it self warming? Does it vibrate? There you go. <laughs> these yeah. are these are important questions. Mm-hmm. Does it extend even further? Mm-hmm. And then back and then forth and then yeah. back and yeah. forth. <laughs> you know, is, there, is there a drill motor behind it? Get it? <laughs> yeah. That's a good um these are all great questions. I really feel like philosophically we're hitting the mark today <laughs> on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Um I do have and, and one of the things that brought me to all of this was when we were talking about the NYPD Robo Dog. Yes. When was that? That was a couple was... weeks ago. Yeah. Something like that. Two, um, three weeks ago. More than yeah. that. I have a video of the Robo Dog. Oh. Um, and actually I didn't uh let me pull let me pull it up real quick, Rosa, because I put it there. Okay. Yeah, so this is actual video of uh said Robo Dog. Um yeah, if you want to make it. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. So they're taking a guy out. They got him handcuffed. He's wearing his mask. Don't worry. <laughs> and then out of the building. Oh, Jesus. Comes this. i never seen nothing like this before in my life. You bet you eat your ass, you damn it. <laughs> see this? I don't like it. He's got a little yeah. robo butthole. <laughs> Dude, Dino Mutt needs that makeover. I wonder if you could ride that thing. I hope so. Yeah. It's about to go down the stairs, too, but it gets scared. He's very prancy. Yeah, he doesn't look masculine. No. He's not a very butch robo dog. No. He's gender neutral. Yeah, I'd say so. And I think he went down backwards. Yeah, he did. He, like, turned around. Yeah. Oh, that shit walked better than a dog. <laughs> oh, oh that shit feels better than a dog. How come that dog? Why come? <laughs> oh, that's R two D two. R two D two, y'all. No, that's Dino Mutt. Just watch out for the Where's blue the falcon. Right here, sitting down. <laughs> Yeah, they just have him sit in the middle of the... I've nothing like that in my life. R2-D2. He's got a little red blinking butthole. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, I've never seen nothing like that in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nor have I. Yeah. At least not live footage anyway. And the, the controversy with those were... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we mentioned this on the last show. I, I'm pretty sure we did. Was that they deployed four of them in boroughs of New York City. And the only one they didn't put it in was Manhattan, which is the, where all the white people live. <laughs> so <laughs> people were a little pissed off that they put them in, you know, Queens and, and Brooklyn and Bronx and all of that. Cat says a uh, nightmare fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And the, the kind of the, the most unsettling part was when it like walks around and then it turns and like walks backwards down the stairs. Yeah. Cause I guess probably because of how the joints are, it needs to turn. And then I guess that would mean that it would walk upstairs forward. forward. And you know, actually that's even kind of smart because then um the head of it, you know, the 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 it's got a little um it's got a, a camera that I'm sure looks in multiple directions. The head of it was would be at the highest point right. when it's going down the stairs and up the stairs so yeah. that it could see first and... Behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, that's kind of smart. Yeah, it's maybe, that, that might be why they did it. Yeah, and then the red blinking butthole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's pretty smart, too. Yeah. 
least you know where it is. Yeah, that's can't, where your data spike goes in. Can't sneak up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck a robot dog. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no. I'm sorry I said that. Sorry I made that implication. Um, <laughs> so, okay, if you're on a jury, do not give in to the to the mob. All right, guys. Okay. No matter how many of your houses they burn down <laughs> afterwards. Okay. Because they dox you. Well, stay strong. Well, yeah. Do what you believe. Snitches get stitches, yeah. Fight for what's right. Is that a thing? I am a real American. I do believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. So, anybody here like audiobooks? I love them. My wife loves them. Does she know how to read? I'm still wondering that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she tried for a while. Yeah. But uh, then she was like, you know what? I think I need to listen to my books. You just have to ignore when, like, she's holding the book upside down. <laughs> she's been there for hours. <laughs> We're already married. I get it. You know? <laughs> Stop pretending. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, so <laughs> I was thinking about audiobooks. That's and... not going to end well for me later. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> just kidding, Sarah. <laughs> She's all, ouch. <laughs> Dad, you're in trouble. I'm, I'm going to haunt you. <sighs> White noise. Um, so I was thinking about um, some of the audiobooks companies you can volunteer to read for. Okay. Oh, and that's cool. That have you really ever heard cool. of that? No. Um, I can't remember what it is, it's, if it's heritage books or some crap like that. But basically, they're like, contact us if um... <laughs> Sarah says, reading divorce law right now. <laughs> I think that's a line of the day. That's a good one. Uh, so you can call them up. You can contact them and volunteer. I don't know if you get to uh, read your own book. Like what, what, whatever you want, or if they give you a book to read, I would imagine that's probably the way it is because all the good ones are probably already been read by yeah. someone better than yeah. you as a voice actor. And the 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 reading style is interesting because sometimes people get a little into it, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just about like their voice, and their voice is just a good voice. And sometimes people are actually like trying to a- act mm-hmm. or put some. Put some stank vocal, on it. Vocal inflection here yeah. and there to show that there's emotion happening. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh, there's a white whale, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ishmael. So they all, there yeah, or they'll, she blows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they'll change up their voice for different characters. Yes. Um, do different accents, that sort of thing. So I was trying to think of books that would be very funny to read. And so one of them that I thought of was there was this book, and I probably should have actually looked up (laughs) who who wrote it. Um, Actually, his name was, I believe, Iceberg Slim. Oh, you're – is that that just called Pimp? It's something like that, yes. Uh, Iceberg Slim, author of Pimp. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's go to Goodreads. Thanks, Dave Chappelle. It was it? <laughs> um, Iceberg Slim, also known as Robert Beck, was born as Robert Lee Maupin, novelist and poet whose famous novel Pimp is semi-autobiographical. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna read some to Please. you a little bit. Yeah, okay? no, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> Before I'd touch a square bitch's slit. I'd suck a thousand clappy pricks and swim through liquid shit. They got green puke between their rotten toes <laughs> and snot runs from their their funky nose. I hope square bitches become syphilitic wrecks. I hope they fall through their own assholes and break their motherfucking necks. <laughs> Iceberg Slim. Wise words. Mm-hmm. From Pimp, the story of my life. 
I feel um, really moved over here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Moved and, in which direction? <laughs> and I just feel like if somebody heard me reading it, they'd be like, "Oh, that's that's really good. Like this guy's <laughs> voice fits what he's on what's point. going on there." Yeah. I felt like yeah. I was actually listening to Iceberg. Yes, I feel like I see slimming icebergs as <laughs> as, right, as right at the moment before my eyes. Um. Son, there's no reason except a stupid one for anybody to project on that screen anything that will worry him or dull that vital edge. After all, we are the absolute bosses of that whole theater in our sh and, and show in our minds. We even write the script. So always write positive, dynamic scripts and show only the best movies for you on that screen, whether you are a pimp or priest. That's actually a pretty good one. Yeah. 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 So not as, you know, I mean, I, I, I could have used some syphilitic bitch references and stuff in there, but but it's fine. Yeah. Um, he also <laughs> had some other ones. Uh, let's see. Uh, he wrote uh, Pimp, the Story of My Life. That was uh, published in 1967. There was also Trick Baby or Trick Baby. <laughs> I don't know where the inflection goes. I I liked the second one more. Trick Baby. Uh, that was Trick, in 1969. Baby. He also wrote Mama Black Widow in 1969. Mama Black Widow. And then The Naked Soul of Iceberg Slim, 1971. That one, oh, and then in 1988, he said The lo uh, he said Long White Con, uh, Airtight Willie and Me in 81. Okay. Uh, Death Wish in 77. Wait, he wrote Death Wish? <laughs> like with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charles Bronson? Goddamn rich cunt! That's, uh, what's his name? The guy <laughs> who played Dr. Ian Malcolm in uh, Jurassic Park. Oh, um, Sean. Nope. God, what is his name? Dr. Ian Malcolm. Jurassic. <clears throat> I'm already looking it up. Sam Neill. No. They, he played a different doctor. He played Dr. Sam Neill. Jeff Bloomberg. Jeff Gold Goldblum. Gold yes. Goldblum. Oh, that's right. Is that who we're talking about? Yeah, yeah Ian oh. Malcolm. Yeah, um, but that was him back in the back in Charles Bronson's uh, Death Wish, and uh, oh. I kill rich cunt. I bleeped it out so people wouldn't have to hear cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Quality check, well done, sir. Mm -hmm. Well done. Oh, let me get a little drink. Oh, what's that cup you're holding there? A what? This cup? Yeah, that cup. Why, it's my sensible sociopath wow. coffee mug. Well, that is a very stylish coffee mug. Where could I get one of those? Well, if you were curious enough, you could uh, go to the sensible sociopath podcast.com and go to the shop. It's really forward slash shop if you want to cut to the chase. Oh, oh. well. If you're super thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks. it's a great mug. It's really... Uh, Durable. We're, we're in. Oh yeah, I'll throw it against the wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it is ceramic, but it's uh no, it's really great. It's uh, I'm, Rome and I were super impressed by the by the by the quality. Yeah, I love it. Because uh, it's, I guess you never know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Just like that movie, RoboCop. Absolutely, you never. <laughs> they didn't know what they were gonna get. Exactly. Get, they thought they were gonna get an obedient robot cop. Oh, and he had directives. RoboCop did? Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of them was like, do no harm. One of them's like, don't talk too much. And the other one was like, like um, egg salad, plain. <laughs> and then the fourth directive was classified. And it turned out it was, don't kill the CEO of the company that made you. Oh. You know, that's a good one to throw in mm -hmm. there. That's a good one. Actually, it was, don't break the law. I don't know. Don't do any stuff. Don't do what Jared Fogle did. Yeah, definitely don't like, do what Jared Fogle did. Lose a bunch Fogel of weight-eating sandwiches and then touch a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
you definitely don't want to be a RoboCop and do that because you've got your, you know. I you can't know. control my horny level. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Because older guys are better. I'll just be your secret lover. I'll make it feel really good for you. <laughs> that last one's Louis C.K., isn't it? Mm -mm. Now they're all, um, well, except for the, the girl one. To catch one. a predator. To catch a predator, yeah. I've never actually watched that. When you told me that that's what that was, I can't believe that that's a real guy's voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what's his name? I'm Who talks uh, like Chris that? Chris Hansen. Yeah. Just take a seat. Just yeah. have a seat right there. Yeah, he's um, he's actually pretty cool. I've seen him on a lot of uh, just shows like podcasts and things because he does. Obviously, the To Catch a Predator thing was his like big, you know, his stairway to heaven. <laughs> and so he he did that for a while, and then I think they've done because it was really only like a 2020 special edition or something, or Dateline. I think it was Dateline. And then he got like a series, and so they would like rent a house somewhere and just lure in all these predators, and so he would confront them, and then so I did a bunch of seasons of that, and then I think they started doing international ones where he would he would like go undercover. Oh, and so it was kind of funny because you have this guy and he decap decap <laughs> <laughs> to catch predator. Yeah, uh, so he would he I mean he would still be himself. I think he would tone down the the voice a little bit the yeah. the the radio presenter voice yeah. sort of thing, but I mean. That's who he is. I guess I, he probably started young and it just ended up that way. Kat uh, says she rewatches re them on YouTube all the time. Ha ha. She misses T-Cap. <laughs> it's a really, really interesting show. I mean, obviously, because it's just a bunch of people who fuck up and, boy, they're dumb, you know, trying to meet up with kids, and, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you get in a, get in a, a chat room. I mean, it's probably just some mental illness that you i mean you know, you're a pedophile or whatever they are you know but i just couldn't see getting in there and be like yeah you, you know uh, <laughs> no i know i also could not see that yeah well i mean i'm like i'm like i don't know and you guys are like i mean i have no problem I, I, with it yeah you're like i don't know I, I, don't, there? I don't know yeah. how you get there <laughs> yeah exactly i'm not gonna try and feed you either way <clears throat> mm-hmm <laughs> And then they always have cookies, which is nice. Do they? Yeah, at the To Catch a Predator house. Yeah. So is it like, like I'm just up? making lemonade. Come on in. And then <laughs> she disappears, and they're like, have some cookies. I'll be right out. I just got to put on my lingerie. <laughs> yeah. I'm 12. Yeah. And I'm a real slut. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is there actual kids there? It's a it's a girl who was I think she was like nineteen the youngest when she started, but she looks nineteen super twenty twenty one and and it was more about her voice oh, okay. I think and, and actually she was just petite and little too so uh, so it worked out but yeah she was just some college student or something that joined this uh, they were called Predator Watch uh, I can't remember. Um, Katrina, do you remember what those guys are called? It's some, it's like something watch or internet people. Uh, like Cat <laughs> says Chris Hen Henson, Hanson, Hanson is a savage with his comebacks mm -hmm. or the 30 year old looking decoys. Yeah. And they, they would even have guys, you know, cause they would have people that were interested in guys. And so they would do that too. Um, Something Justice. Justice League. Yes, the Justice League. Yeah, I are thought so. Going for after the online predators. <laughs> um, as long as it's not the Justice Friends. <laughs> are they the young ones? No, I don't know. They oh. they were always after the Legion of Doom. Oh yes, Legion of Doom. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. Yes. Oh yes, that was an old crappy show. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. That's that's why we're saying you know, keep them away from that. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of kid touchers on that <laughs> cartoon. So, 
Yeah, so perverted justice. That's what it is. God damn it, Katrina. Oh, oh she, great. She Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Literally. Same yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally the moment you put it there. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, perverted justice was was people that would would uh, catch internet predators and then turn the their information over to the police, you know, like just get the information out of them and and I don't know. So they would have to go to certain states, I believe, because only certain states you could like arrest someone. Because the first one that they ever did, they had to let everybody go because they they just embarrassed them. Oh. Which, you know, I mean, that's that's still good. But um, in some of them, they would show up multiple times. So they've, Damn. like, caught the same guy again, like, <laughs> like two or three times. How? Steve, this is punch card number four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come back here. The last one. <laughs> number five, and we've got to take you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because sometimes they're like, Oh shit! The you know the guys are piling up. Quick, get that guy out so this other guy can come in. You know, it's it's Listen, pretty, pretty um, interesting. You're our two forty five. We've got yeah. one in yeah. uh, ten minutes. We're gonna need you to speed this up. Pretty much, they, or they would have the cops pull the guy over on his way, and you know, and they were still able to, I guess, nab him because they have all the chat records and they, you know, whatever they do to collect evidence. Yeah, I don't think you should be letting go of child molesters that are showing up to houses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, obviously they've the, made a clear decision. Yeah, to, clearly the embarrassment yes. factor isn't enough to stop these people. Yes. That's yeah. why on South Park when they were doing the uh, Chris Hansen episode and the To Catch Predator, everybody who was showing up walked into the room and as soon as they saw Chris Hansen, he was like, go ahead and take a seat. They just kill themselves on the spot. Yeah, yeah. And it was just person after person walking in and shooting themselves in the head. There was actually a guy who did kill himself. Um, mm. He. So I believe he was a city councilman person or some crap like that. He ended up going and not going into the house. But I think he's, I, I don't know, somehow he, like, knew something was going on. And, and and or he might have been a police officer, actually. Maybe that was it. I don't know. But he, the, the, the district attorney or something, basically put out a warrant and sent some people to go to his house. And he had killed himself because he knew. Good. You know, was, he might have been, or he might have worked for the court. I can't remember. But Someone that, official. Yes, it was it was someone who should not have been. I mean, you know, look. Yeah. I'm sure they come in. Yeah, all, but he was in the public's eye, yes. basically. Yeah, someone who should have known not to do those sorts of things. <laughs> He's not going to be in my town this week. Well, and the other thing that that gets me so like I've I've um I mean we've all gone on to double list, you know, and like look for glory holes and things like that, you know. Oh yeah, all the time. So. Um, okay. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> How do you spell that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that one word? Is there a hyphen? What's is that, is that double with a capital D? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's the new uh, um, Craigslist. Oh, okay. So you can't hook up on Craigslist anymore. So they have other other alternate sites to go to. Cat oh. says he was in government. That's when the production stopped, unfortunately. Yes. Oh. And that was it. Is basically, I think, I don't know if somebody, if their family tried to sue or who knows, but yeah, basically. Why? Why? Why would you try to sue over the embarrassment of finding out that one of it? Never mind. Yeah, he's rape trying to be a kid rapier. <sighs> I mean, you know, look, if your dad kills himself and and. You want someone to pay for it, you know? Who I, knows? I, I guess. Yeah, I I, guess. I think that's. Yeah, I guess that's that's what the. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you do shit. That's fucking. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, basically, they could have been held responsible in some way for his for his uh, untimely demise. He shot himself. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. I thought I thought it was an ice pick in the face. Oh, in yeah, the face, yeah, in yeah. the face. Okay. 
Well, so, at least he didn't, you know, try and go under the chin or mm-hmm. possibly. You ever seen someone blow their face off and then they're still alive? No. Not, really? not recently. Oh, what, yeah, what yeah, yeah. What do you mean, really? When, when we, it when happens have you seen all the this? time. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. There's uh, guys, and what they'll do is they'll put the shotgun under their chin and tilt their head back, and it just carves out their face, and then they've got nothing there. Uh, but their brain completely intact. Do, do they survive? Or, I mean, you'd bleed out, wouldn't you? I think I have not seen someone healed from Or no, actually, I have seen someone healed from it, yeah. Um, I did see a guy that was really messed up. He was he was really young though when it happened. He was like seventeen. Um, his his friend they 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 agreed to um killing themselves like a suicide pact. Um, I don't know him and his buddy were like Romeo and Juliet, I guess. Oh man, gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they went to the park and his friend shot himself with a shotgun and killed himself, and then he put put the shotgun under his uh under his chin and yeah ended up blowing out the front of his face but i think he i think he kept his eyes oh well that's convenient. so i think yeah i think he you was... sure he just didn't sneeze he well, just sneezed really hard usually the <laughs> eyes pop out first though yeah it's it's pretty interesting so you'll just have these people that like have these like hollow you know bloody meaty holes and then you'll just see the exhale of breath and they'll still try to talk and stuff, uh, you know, pretty, but it's all throat. Um, <laughs> so they could probably be like a, a, a monk. Robocop? Or a Robocop. Yeah, they could. Well, no, they're, they're missing like that the perfect. Like the yep. Yeah, they don't have the face. They just have a robo face. <laughs> <laughs> Take their tidy gut out, <laughs> you know, because their thighs regular. Or they put it up, they cram the gun between their butt cheeks like I do. <laughs> you gotta hide it. It's not somewhere. quite as cool. <laughs> <laughs> when I when the gun when the gun gets extruded from me, it's not quite as cool as from from Robocop's thigh. And, and it's not as big of a gun. But I'm working I don't up think to it's it. It's the size oh of the gun God. that matters, yeah. but they've got pills for that. Oh, Robocop's gun's huge. This is a ridiculous gun. It's a lot to work up to. Yeah, yeah that's I'll true. be a RoboCop. Do you think it was enhancements? <laughs> Performance enhancing? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, so we've all been on Double List. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Not intentional, but it works. Yeah, feels good, does, does it? Yeah, it does. I will say that. It does like feel It's like good. scratching an itch. <sighs> um. Okay, so let's say you're like, like, hey, sexy lady, that's probably not, you know, very attractive or <laughs> have all your, having all of your teeth. <laughs> you feel like getting down, you know, say things like that to her. Mm-hmm. Get her all wet and sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. okay. Sure. Yep, totally. So you're doing that and you're... you're your uh, sex texting, okay. As sexting, the kids call it. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so you do that, and then you're about to head over to her house, and you're driving, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's like six minutes away, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you ejaculate on the ride over, and then you go home. <laughs> okay. Saved yourself some gas. Yeah, totally. Add some. I mean. I'm sure she's a nice lady. Yeah. But what I'm getting at, I'm sure you can see where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, they, that she's got a great personality. That. And some of these guys that would go to the to catch a predator house, the TCAP house, would drive for hours and hours. It's like two hours, six hours, whatever, four hours. Like, Jesus Christ, just jerk off and yes, then go seriously. home. <laughs> You're, I just can't see. Well, and I'm wondering, like, how long have you had a hard on that you've been, you know, you're you're expecting this thing that isn't there, isn't going to be there because that doesn't exist. There's no 14 year olds asking for 47 year olds to come visit them, you know, and bring them wine coolers. 
Just bring me some strawberry daiquiris. Yeah, we'll have fun. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I got a new swimsuit. <laughs> so, Do you want me to model it for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's really what it is. Uh, I, I just can't imagine driving and being like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here I go. Well, Four hours to map says that I still got another two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know who who never fall through? Fourteen year olds. <laughs> you know, you know who are they're rock always solid. trustworthy. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know who's not flaky? <laughs> uh, just jerk off, you idiot. I think but, that's a strong point. Yeah. Just jerk off. Yeah. Well, you know, Tyler Durden said self-improvement is masturbation. That's true. And masturbation is keeping you out of to catch predator houses. It's true. I mean, my, I guess not that. Kat says, my favorite is when they say, I came all this way to tell that her I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Or to tell her that this is dangerous, what she's doing. <laughs> oh, really? And what's in the bag? Oh, condoms and 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 lube and uh, you know, uh, wine coolers and a rag and, and a bottle Oreos. of ether. And the rag says, "Ether goes here." Exactly. <laughs> Apply to face. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah, it's one of the greatest shows that's ever been on television. I would say. I'll have to watch it sometime. Sometime, yeah. I'll it's have to dip into that. Well, and they've got the compilations now, so that I mean, I mean, really watching the show is just great because it's it's pretty fast paced, and they just you know show a lot of guys and and then and then so Chris Hansen brings out the he comes out and he doesn't tell them who he is and what he's what he is, so they all they don't know there's hidden cameras. They just think. You know, they're like dad's home or something. Yes, either dad's home or that they're police. I think generally they think he's a police officer. He's like, uh, "What are you doing here? Um, who are you? You know, like, like, like that's uh, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat." And so they'd sit down and, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here to meet uh, if Jamie. She said she was nineteen. <laughs> oh, it says here. Uh, she said, I'm 13 years old. Ooh, and then, like, he just reads off the stuff. Ooh, that's too old, or that's too young. Uh, you know, I could get in big trouble, you know, and so he's just reading him all this, <laughs> these guys all this stuff, and they're like, fuck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, just just hearing back all that horny fucking, because they're not horny anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, could you imagine how unhorny you mm -hmm. would be at that point? Yep. Yeah, yeah. hopefully it'd be yep. in instant. You've been up and playing with your dick for fucking four hours while you're driving <laughs> over there. <laughs> uh, and then suddenly Chris Hansen, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And he just reads them, you know. I'll make it feel really good for you. Like, <laughs> that's him reading transcripts <laughs> of, of what these guys say. So. I can't control my horny level. I just love the way he says it. Yeah. I can't control my horny level. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a game show host saying it. Totally. Totally. Oh, man. He's a professional broadcaster. Yeah. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. So, anyways, Death Wish, another great movie. Death Wish and and um, what's the Dirty Harry? So, Death Wish and Dirty Harry both came around times when lawlessness was pretty prevalent in America, mm -hmm. and they both became very iconic heroes to the American people because they were vigilante, you know, dirty cop. I mean, not dirty cop, but like excessive force cop yeah you know? yeah um, i believe one of his movies the subtitle secondary title whatever was called magnum force Ooh. yeah because he used a 44 magnum <sighs> largest handgun in the world little hand cannon yeah um <clears throat> the most powerful most powerful yeah so a lot of fun <laughs> is that what you guys thought we were going to talk about tonight <laughs> no, no I, mean, I had no clue well you know just trying to Keep just it. trying to bring everybody's uh uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> i 
some interesting things we could talk about. Roma, I'm going to have you look at some things up. Okay. Because I didn't prepare anything for this, but I think it's going to be a good one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> we all like beautiful people. Is that not true? Yeah. Dan? Yeah. Roma? In general, general yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice to look at nice people. Um, but the great part is, is when they're really nice people on the inside too. Like, yeah. Because I don't think those th- two things go together very often. No, I mean, not certain really. cases. Otherwise, <laughs> um, and you know, we've talked in the past how I was like very, very close to having Down syndrome. We right? okay because of my sure. my squinty eyes. Oh yeah, my my, my fat <laughs> kind of the what was it quirky. Yeah, quirky from life goes on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was very close to having Down syndrome. And uh, what I recently discovered is that there are, um, you know, they have like the Special Olympics and things, yeah. uh-huh. which I think are awesome because, first of all, the kids are amazing and, you know, they're, they're, yeah, I just think that it's amazing. Well, there are Down syndrome uh, models. Okay. Which is pretty goddamn cool. So, so. If you, you know, and I don't think that this is anything, anything, um, there's like this one male model that I saw and he was better looking than I am, which isn't that hard to do, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just like, is that one of them? Mm, he, I mean, he, he was on like a run. Oh, that's him. Uh, right the fourth one. Right here. Yes. Yeah, he's got you beat by a mile. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, could you uh, could you go bigger on that one? I mean, he's just dreamy. He kind of is. Yeah. It's a cut. Yeah, I mean, he's got a big neck. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Is this him too? Yeah. Yeah, he looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he looks, he's got that kind of aloof look, like, Self like I'm jacket. cool, you know, like, like, oh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, yeah, that guy's good. Fashion. Yeah. Yep. I like the fashion. Good head of hair. <laughs> Looking I don't know quite about, sensible. I don't know about sitting. You see, the jacket is wrong with the chair. Yeah. You yeah. can't do... The two at the same time. Um, you know, you need a pattern chair or a, yeah, or a uh, pattern jacket. You know, it's kind of like. Yeah. We got wrestlers. I'm glad this is a thing. Yeah, no, it's freaking awesome. And that's it, is, is I basically <laughs> saw like that Kit fourth Harrington guy in there. in there. Who? Kit Harrington. <laughs> Who's that? He was a character from the fourth one in. Right here. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> Kit Harrington right in the middle. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Okay. Oh, speaks out about Down syndrome. Right. I mean, I'm glad he's finding work <laughs> despite his condition. <laughs> Did you know Jon Snow had Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> Might explain a lot. Hmm. Um. Yeah, there was a uh, there was. There's some pretty cute girls with uh, Down syndrome too, and I can't I can't remember what the pictures were though. But she's yeah, super like a cute. fitness model. Yeah, that's awesome. Champion gymnast. That's awesome. And people with Down syndrome are the best people. They're like the most sincere, loving, like honest, and and yeah, always positive. It's like there's a yeah, I hope I hope this is uh you know we're we're going into the the fat modeling and stuff and all of the you know everything is beautiful stuff. So I hope that yeah I no. hope that we see more uh, more always, Dove commercials. It's always a positive <laughs> thing. Yeah, because uh what was that what was that Johnny Knoxville movie uh The Ringer? Yes, where he had all the all the you know special needs kids. Um, and I thought it was awesome. And they yeah, were just, and he was trying to rig the Special Olympics. Yes, and pretending to, yeah, pretending to be retarded. And then he had the actors, and the actors were some of the funniest parts of it. Um, 
And it's just awesome because those guys obviously want to be actors or, yeah. or, or, you know, comedians or something. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty rad to, to do a, a Johnny Knoxville movie. It's, it's pretty legit. And that was like at the height of Jackass and, oh, yeah. and all that. I think between Jackass 2 and Jackass 3. So, anyways. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about it. I love it. It's mm-hmm. so super, super sweet and... Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's better representation of of humanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone should be included. Yeah, yeah, it's every everybody's different, and um, we don't all look the same. You know, and I think I think something that's that's really been uh, looked over too, and of course, you know, the whole inclusion thing and and the 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 PC culture is um, people with disabilities or, or uh, like um, handicaps, like deformities, like mm-hmm. missing limbs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there was a girl that used to come into my work a lot and she was missing one of her, I think it was one of her legs and gorgeous girl, gorgeous. But I cannot imagine how hard it would be to try to navigate life missing a limb. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you know if it was a traumatic thing or she was I born I don't know it? the story okay. behind it, no. Because I feel like if you, I mean, Jesus, I've seen such crazy stuff. Uh, oh. All right. <laughs> there was this one. So I guess the difference but um with it being um that there are you know the traumatic loss and then there's born without. And so if you're born without you just don't even know the difference. Yeah. If it's tra- traumatic loss, however, you know, that's that's like the fa- be. phantom limb syndrome. Well, that and you just don't know how to how to you know. Yeah, could you imagine just not having? Yeah, you know? imagine just not having a, one of your hands, you know, in the morning. That would I'd be. I put a flashlight on. on. <laughs> 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 um, At least <let's>... you're honest. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this is going to make everyone's day. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> okay. Um yeah, just whichever one you want, Roma is fine. Yeah, you got to share this with the people. I will. So, this is someone that I believe was born and really learned how to use their body in a way that most of us don't. Um I believe this is in Brazil, and so it's a guy in a chair. Oh, my God. And he has a gun that he racks with his feet. He has a pistol in his electric wheelchair, and he is trading this gun on this dude. I mean, that's some solid dedication. Dude, I'd give him whatever he wanted just for doing it. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's amazing the dexterity of his feet because, like, he, like, pulls the gun out and then, like, grabs it with his knuckles and then, like, I don't know if he was replacing it or racking it, but... Pretty goddamn impressive. Yeah. So, I, mean, I couldn't even be mad at him. So I'm just saying, your, you know, your friend that was missing the leg, if she was born like that, uh, the sky's the limit. You'd be like scratching your own back with your foot because <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. And there's actually people that I think they wipe their ass with their feet. I mean, right? if you do what you got to do, I guess. Yeah. I don't know exactly how that works. Somebody was saying once that you could put toilet paper on the bar, on the the grab bar, and then just like slide your ass like a stripper (laughs) grips the bar with their butt cheeks. You could sort of do that. You know, Dan? There are people who are talented in this world. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it'd be a curse to have a really bodacious ass, though. (laughs) Yeah. And you probably would because your legs would be so strong. You'd probably have the best butt in the whole world. (laughs) And it'd just be harder and harder to clean the better your ass got. (laughs) You know? You'd probably eat a lot of fiber, though. I would. (laughs) Sometimes you poop clean. Yeah. No, that's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even check. <laughs> I know. It's fine. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. 
That's why I got a bidet, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yep. Nice warm seat. Actually, that's pretty fine, too. Sometimes you just poop clean and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> poop clean, walk away. <laughs> You're going to have to review this episode for all the great shirt ideas. <laughs> Poop clean, walk away. The sensible sociopath. Uh, we're at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that was too much fun. Um, <clears throat> so, I want to thank everyone. Um, our Patreon uh, subscribers, we got uh, Sarah and Steve S, and they are helping support us and uh, getting up our website so that we can uh, give merch to the people. And so hopefully you can go there to the sensible sociopath podcast.com, buy some of our merch and help support the show. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at the sensible sociopath podcast. You can also listen to us on all major podcasting platforms, anywhere you get your audio podcasts. Subscribe to us here on YouTube or Rumble or uh, BitChute. And um, you can also watch us and listen to us and all that stuff on the SensibleSociopathPodcast.com. So get all your your favorite shows, news, you know, and stuff there. And... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to at least come up with one shirt from this episode today. Cause <laughs> I'm sure there's a good one. Yeah, there's been several good ones. I, I, yeah. Sandwich Tangent was my favorite. That is a really good one. <laughs> that is a really, okay. It's Sandwich Tangent. <laughs> so order your other shirts and then this one will come along and you'll order that one too. Yay. <laughs> All right. That'll be a great spring summer tea. And I'd like to say before we go, congratulations on 98 and excited for the next two. Yes. Super excited for the next two and all of the ones to follow. Yes. We're, uh, you know, it, we couldn't do it without uh, without you guys and, and without Dan coming in and being awesome to talk to and, and, and funny. And I'm okay. Hey, and everybody in the chat making us laugh uh, very hard because <laughs> that's what makes this fun seriously it's yeah. what makes it super super fun and why we do it every freaking friday because we love it uh and you know if i didn't have such a bad drug problem i would do it more nights a week <laughs> <laughs> is this it the downers true? or the uppers i mean you know it starts one and then goes into the other that's, speed balls no, that's speed what i do balls. Okay. Yeah. yeah hanging out in minneapolis you know that's good. The That's huge. Good. Just yeah. got to stay away from Detroit. Yeah, exactly. That's where the RoboCops are. Exactly. Well, thank you, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. Best podcast in the world. The world would not be the same. I like it. No wonder my anxiety is so high. Two people laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Two people cried. Oh, what's in the box? Most people were silent. And that's that's that was it. As I was, that's I, I I. Now I am become death. Sounds like a bad time. The destroyer of worlds. Yeah, so this doesn't seem like a great idea to me. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. You didn't tell me any of that. That's crazy. Well, Rama, when you're a hero, you don't tell everyone. Until you're on your podcast. I'm about to hear some shit. We all need to laugh. I think just sitting down and, you know, listening to... The Sensible Sociopath. This is the shit you're supposed to be watching. Gen X is going to love it. Millennials are going to be like, I'm offended. You have offended me. Also, my dog has a giant dick. Oh my god, that's enormous. I love it. It's still a racist dog whistle. Where you kind of have like a rotating cast of characters. We're talking baby seals, eagles, wolves. I'm just glad we're not going to have to eat with racism anymore. It's worse than the butthole. We're technically considered propaganda. It is very contagious. I think we really need to talk about environmentalism. Like, are they studying pine cones? Make yourself a nice stingray omelet. That's how Steve Irwin died. Cholesterol. It's fucking delicious. His father had ended up killing his mother and committing suicide. In that order? That's diabolical. I like it. They had an apple gun where you could shoot Bigfoot. Has she always been retarded? I mean, she could have had a head injury. <laughs> you don't know anything about tartar sauce. He had picked up a 400-pound statue and was, like, walking around with it. 
was the statue racist? I'd like to think so. It's like how they invented bacon and avocado to make a turkey sandwich tolerable. I have a fear of fire. Like a werewolf? <laughs> Daniel, you've been our greatest viewer. Well, Daniel and Sarah and Katrina. Daniel!